Spine crackers. Spine mother boop crackers. That's right. We're clean. I saved you the trouble of having to do the the beep, Matt. I did myself. We're bleeping all cusses. There's no more cussing (laughs) happening. Maybe we should bleep crackers because it's kind of derogatory. Of us. The way that I use it sometimes. Right. But you know, we're not we're not allowing even self flagellation linguistically. Facts. Nothing Mm. bad. I'm not fat. <laughs> You're not. Smarter You're than me, not dude. smarter than me, dude. <laughs> dude, you can't tell me to calm down because we're actually not friends anymore. <laughs> You're not fatter than me. That dude. shit was so funny. Uh, that was uh, like I still sometimes get that way playing board games. Like, I know. I mean, as demonstrated. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm horrible at uh, w- playing Scrabble. I'm a freaking monster. It's such like, a referendum in my mind on myself, just personally. Like, you're just a bad, like, dumb, dumb idiot. I'm bad and dumb. I can't even play a baby game with my friends. (laughs) Just get absolutely spanked. Oh, do you need a diaper, you little dumb baby? (laughs) (laughs) That would be so funny if we played Scrabble together and whoever loses the most has to wear a diaper. Do you need your fucking fucking juice out of your nipple bottle, you little (laughs) dumb, stupid baby? I would cry so quickly if you Oh, wait, let me go to the kitchen. I got some baby powder. (laughs) Yeah. Do you need I'm me sorry. To, do you need while me to you're fucking... pouting, do you need <laughs> warm up some milk for you while you're pouting over there? You fucking oh, little toddler, you idiot, stupid baby. Do you need me to put you in your little crib and fucking put a put a fucking monitor in your room so I can hear you cry and shade your pants? You stupid baby. <laughs> Maybe a mobile is more your speed. You just sort of look at it spinning around. You can't even touch it. Oh my god, that's funny because yeah. all this baby talk reminds me of baby owls and the title of this book is the day of the owl which isn't about a baby owl, love that i love that for us owls have babies so before that we do that hold on let me just pause before we get into this i want to <laughs> because because i i failed to do this in the last like five four episodes we have a patreon go to mm. it subscribe to it it's patreon.com slash spine we put up fun things bonus reviews top 10 lists uh bookshelf tours random shit whatever we want and uh it's fun and you can uh if you like the show go subscribe to it and if you and really like the show pay us a bunch channel. of money and then you can come on the show yeah that's true tier. we also have a youtube channel called spine crackers where we have free content and mini episodes of uh stories and insights into paul's daily life yes you can see that's my daily true. routine how i interact with the world and there's a vlog there's sort of a vlog <laughs> element to it <laughs> well it's funny because i was coming off of the millennial fiction thing right from luster and like uh there's some some publisher uh tyrant books or something um oh that guy died passed right? away, yeah Gian something or other uh f and, uh, can we get an f in the chat so f in the chat for that i think he had been putting out he put out like gary lutz and uh fuck some other people not not much to his name though i i feel like he he died pretty early on in the endeavor uh maybe giancarlo di trapano 2013 something like that um yeah pour one out for for that man 47 man young too young yeah uh and uh the reason i had sort of found my way back to that you know what was what was initially just sort of like a headline uh, was because of the millennial fiction thing, and mm. I was looking around, and I, I there there's a there was a there's a book he published called I think it's called Live Blog, um, by Megan Boyle. Uh, Interesting. I, I will defer judgment on what I think about 
that or Megan Boyle because I, I she it's like a seven hundred page book she made of of sort of like transcribed live journal shit. Oh and, god, um, she's got like a, a YouTube that you can actively go go watch. Still like still creating content. Uh, I think she recently just posted a little thing for in memoriam kind of mm. um but just to, just to bring that whole notion a little bit further back because i feel like i was talking i don't know when like uh the other in, like examples of millennial fiction were but this feels maybe a little brings it back a little bit earlier like 28 2018 i'm just looking oh oh i guess she started the project in 2013 but whatever so yeah. never mind. No, well, but 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 that shows that some of those ideas have been kind of like in the ether for longer. Like just because it was published in 2018 doesn't mean it hadn't been like you know what I mean. And I, that's also it. Also, that whole project feels way more in line with like the active definition of like somebody obsessing over the minutia of their lives and right. being neurotic and overeducated. <laughs> yeah, which which also is sort of what we were talking about last week with Henry Miller. Yes. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Every book is a sequel to the next. Every book is a sequel to the next. Although. This one might be hard as a sequel to the Henry Miller book. So, but although it's, I, okay, maybe we can find a way. It furnishes the mind palace. Yeah. So uh, this week we're talking about The Day of the Owl by Sicilian uh, uh, author Leonardo Sciascia. And I mm-hmm. think that's pretty close on the pronunciation. Um, it was my pick. Gabe. Me, Gabe. Oh yeah, I'm Gabe and that the other two are Matt and Paul. Yeah. I'm Paul. I'm Paul. So, so yourself. Okay, so <laughs> I picked this book basically because I had heard of, sort of heard about Shasha. My so okay, take another step back. My favorite author is George Simenon. I've said that before on this podcast. We've uh, reviewed one of his books uh, in in an episode, um, Dirty Snow, and. Um, he is a crime writer, basically. He wrote a series of detective novels uh, following Inspector Magre, and uh, and then a number of other texts about not necessarily crime, but crime is usually involved um, in, in one capacity or another. And I had sort of, you know, heard of, of Shasha's work and had wanted to read him because he's also has a bit of a reputation for being a sort of, you know, a, he, you know, a, a place based sort of crime writer, the same way that, that Simonon talks like all of his crime novels are set in and around France and, and, you know, Europe broadly construed. Uh, Chasha is even more sort of focused on Sicily, but he was sort of, he's also doing crime writing. Right. Uh, and so basically in the most reductive, the most reductive way to put it, I wanted to read him because I was like, "Ah, oh, Italian Simonon, good." Oh, that sounds like someone I want to read. <laughs> You're so close to being a film buff with Italian cinema. <laughs> oh, pepperoni, pepperoni Simonon sounds great. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly, exactly. Um, and uh, so I, I picked this book because it's a, it's you know digestible. It's uh, short it's a short book um and it is his as far as i understand it it's his first crime novel he wrote a couple other things before it that were sort of shorter and and kind of like you know more literary but maybe but this was his first kind of foray into the the crime detective genre and so i wanted to kind of start from the beginning with his oeuvre um and 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 just kind of work forward hopefully ultimately and like yeah. what makes like the 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 interesting difference i mean simonon was and is still like famous and successful for the most part right i mean like uh well known and regarded not as Shasha. much as, not as much as i think he wanted i mean simonon simonon wanted a nobel Really? He, that he was like gunning for that. Ab- well, he, yeah, and he explicitly talked a few times about being like somewhat bitter that he was never even in the conversation. Shasha was agree. like agree. politically and inv- like regarded. Yes. That's what I thought was interesting was like at least for a a a, a spat of time um he was like apparently like beloved for mostly like 
political and social reasons of of being the the kind of embedded critic of mafia activity in within Italy and and Sicily specifically. Although I yeah. always get confused about how much like Sicily um, dissociates from the like the boot. You know, yes. like, like what, what, what's, what, I mean, I feel like their identities have always, their identity as, as their own sort of sovereign thing has been very distinct and, and like actively so. I think that, that, I think that's something that comes through in this text really like sort of, you know, clearly because I have the same, I had the same sort of like thought, like I know, you know, even just like dumb shit, right? Like my, you know, my wife is from. Uh, uh, you know, across the bridge, like from New York City, like Rockland County type area. And there's mm-hmm. a lot of like Italian, you know, like, like Guido type Italian people over there. But everyone, the people who trace their origins to Sicily, always distinguish themselves from people yeah. who trace their origins to mainland Italy. And it's so interesting to me, the degree to which, as you said, Matt, Sicily is like its own fucking thing even though it's part of the country of italy it doesn't and there are moments in this book where they talk about like having to have interpreters and translators to translate the sicilian dialect for a native mainland italian speaker yeah right and and it's funny also doubly so because culturally like the mafia in 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 u.s pop culture and, and and you know in all those mediums of like film and writing and stuff is is such an established aesthetic and kind of vibe in and of its, you know, yes. on its own. So it's just funny to like hear, like, I don't know, the mafia, it almost like looms larger in a weird way. Cause yeah, the origin point was Sicily. Like, I don't know, fucking the Sopranos and shit. Like, right. you know, the Godfather, whatever the fuck you name anything. Like they're always like, they go back to mother Sicily. Molto fucking bene. Yeah, fucking gabagool and all that <laughs> shit. Yeah, and I, and and so yeah, I mean you're right. Sha- like uh, Shasha was politically involved. He became sort of mm-hmm. he wasn't at the time of this book's publication in 1961, but he became a sort of crusader, like a political, like really you know, like endorsing political candidates and like advocating mm-hmm. policies uh, as a sort of like anti mafia, you know, public figure in Italy. Um, as he came of age, like sort of during the last sputterings of, of fascist Italy, right? Yes. In like 1945, 46. Yes. And that comes through in this book too, right? There's a lot of kind of background about the, the sort of echoes of fascism and it's, it's not foregrounded, but there's, there are political aspects to this book where there's, they're talking about fascism and they're talking about communism and they're talking about these various political factions within Italy. Um, I wish I knew more because, like, isn't Italy considered like like isn't Italian fascism like the o- kind of like the OG fascism that gives us what we talk about now? And I I think yeah, and I think specifically it gives us a lot of the um, the aesthetic qualities of fascism and gives us a lot of the stuff about you know like human form and like you know race sort of you know realism right. and shit like that. Um, I think those things specifically were very uh, Italian uh, uh, in origin. Hmm. Right. Uh, Rome three. That's what they wanted to establish. Yes. The so third Rome. Right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, I, I think the book for how short it is, it packs in a lot of like threads that I that, that I personally came away wanting to continue following about like Sicily as a place that's distinct from mainland Italy and the sort of origins and culture of, of the mafia um, and that the role of sort of fascism and political disagreement in sort of like framing Sicily versus mainland Italy and the role of the mob. And and because the, 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 the detective Belodi um, makes a comment at one point in the text that I think is really telling, and obviously we'll get into it more, but he talks about, um, you know, fascism and the mob and, and, and Sicily. And he, he has this disdain for Sicily at the, at this moment in the book. And he's like, you know what? Fascism would be better than this shit. 
basically. <laughs> like being like essentially anarchically governed by this like shadow, like shadow organization that like all public figures either genuinely don't believe even exists or are are sort of being paid or or choosing to deny exists for their own personal benefit. He he also su- seems to suggest which is even more interesting that like fascism allowed for the mafia to take root in Sicily by giving Sicily more free reign. There's like a bizarre right. like interchange where it's like be- when fascism like was from like whatever the 20s to the 40s was occurring, they're kind of like didn't because a lot of it was like German based anyway, there was like, they were like, all right, Sicily, you're kind of like, like do your thing. And then, so they weirdly had freedom during that period, yes. which is also a very like embittering fact that Belodi mentions. And now he's like, ironically, like, I wish like they should now have fascism more than Italy, mainland Italy ever should have. Yes. <laughs> like yes. it sucks even more ass. Cause it's just like j- a bunch of tribal family people just clamming up every time anyone is like, why did you shoot a guy? Why did you uh, put cement shoes on that guy and throw him <laughs> in the water? Right. Like, I don't know nothing. I don't know. Fuck you. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, you know, that's, that's one of the other things that was really interesting for me about reading this book is that, you know, we all have, as Americans, a sort of um, baseline, as you already talked about, Matt, you already mentioned, like, a baseline kind of cultural, uh, we, we, like, we've absorbed through osmosis, like, some views about the mafia, some sort of sense of the mob, right? Whether it's the Godfather or fucking, you know, whatever, right? Um, it's interesting to think about or, or to experience the view of, of these or this organization and the history of it and, and the culture of it and the people from the perspective of a native Sicilian versus the way it gets transmuted and, and, and mutated in American pop culture. Right. And the, the, yeah, it reminds yeah. me of uh, like, like any sort of uh, origin story. It, I was thinking that this was like uh I, I, the, the alternate title would be Baloney Bolo, and the League of Shadows. <laughs> <laughs> that's I don't even really think that's a bad title. I like that uh, actually. Yeah, I was sitting on that one for a while. That, so. <laughs> <laughs> that one was getting nice and ripe and ready yeah. to go. It, it, so that was that was one of the other reasons that I really wanted to read this, and and I think that it was I don't know uh, instructive in that way because again like. The mafia as we understand it in America is one thing. And the mafia as it exists on the ground in Italy and Sicily is a, sort of has a resemblance to that thing that we talk about in America. And he does reference in here that there, the, you know, the mafia has sort of extended into America in, in, in various ways. But it's not the same thing, right? Like it's, it's a different it's a different sort of can of worms. It's kind of like in Twilight, like, there's, like, <laughs> the vampires, and they live in Seattle, but then there's, like, the, you know, the, the council Italian of vampires. vampires, and they're all Italian. <laughs> what are they called? What's their fucking name? The, the, the Volturi. Yeah, oh, nice. they're all they're European, old. and they're like, well, we're actually vampires, and you guys are a bunch of fucking hicks in, right. for- in Forks, Washington. Yes. It is kind of like that. Yeah. Not, no, no, not joking. <laughs> no, no. That's, Just I, like think, the- I actually think it's an apt metaphor continental european like where the spores were released and then <laughs> they like take hold in other in other countries i was i was um oh, i was looking for the word omerta or whatever the the what is described as like the code of silence amongst right. mafiosi right um which which never gets thrown out but i mean that's essentially like the the the, the driving force of the plot yep yeah, is so that code. so the plot we should probably speak on a little bit. It's a it's it it is a sort of detective story, but it's marinating or it's or it's in the context of all of these other bigger picture questions about the mafia, po- you know, political sort of history and and Sicily as a place and so on and so forth. Um, but the plot basically is a man is shot. Uh, Salvatore, what's what's his last name? Colas Berna. Colas Berna. Um. And he runs a sort of like 
um, my impression was that it was kind of like a, almost like a grassroots, like, like, like construction company that's sort of like, you know, by the people for the people, blah, 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 blah. Right. Um, and, uh, he's offered, uh, you know, help, quote unquote help, um, by certain people who are involved with the mob and, and, you know, he refuses their help because he knows what that entails. And then he's ultimately killed for it. And it is the, the story of the detective on the case, Belodi, who we've already uh, referenced, trying to kind of unravel this, you know, mess. And, and he ultimately does. He ultimately basically figures out who was involved and who did what and, and um, what the, the sort of outlines of the crime were. But uh, spoilers – Spoiler alert to anyone, whatever. Of course, that's we. That's what we do. Everything is spoiled on Spinecrackers, including your experience um, <laughs> <laughs> and your day and your day. And uh, yeah. Um, so, he, but he he ultimately essentially solves the crime, right? And there's a lot of stuff about. There's a lot of you know text where describing the interviews and his interactions with the people. You know, the, just like the the day to day of the detective work which I thought was very effective. Um, but ultimately nothing happens, right? He solves the crime. He yeah. tells the relevant people and then it all just kind of fucking dissipates in this, in this like cloud of, of, of mist. And like, to me that, that, that felt so true to like how these organizations operate like shit just it's it's not it's usually not as dramatic as like an assassination or and there are assassinations in this book um but it's just like finding the ways to make shit just kind of go away in the bureaucracy of the law enforcement system and i thought it was very effective at describing that that feeling and that phenomenon yeah and in that way it reminded me a bit of simonon for sure it's like the detective solves the crime but there's no headway about the overall issues about the culture at all. Yes. It's like, it's going to keep going. It's going to keep, it's going to keep, uh, it's going to, murders are going to happen no matter what. Um, so I think, you know, I was reading this book and comparing it to Simonon a lot. It's hard not to. It was really hard not to. And I think that was one of the, the biggest differences for me is that like Simonon deals with a uh, overall, the overall humanity of, and evils in humanity and just like, you know, the notions of crime as just what it is of evil notions or whatever. But this focus more on, you know, the mafia and that particular infiltration of a sector of Italy, you know, Sicily. But yeah. Just a, it, a, it a guy solving it. Similar. Yeah. A guy solving yeah, it. And then any McGray hmm. novels. Have you read no, the no. I mean, books? I've I've read the the two Simonon books. Um, nice. Yeah, and none, neither. They're all standalones. None of them have McGray in them. Right. Yeah, this one felt but, very. I've read a couple McGray, and they this one felt very Italian McGray for sure. Yeah. Right. Like a uh, uh, because you know there 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 it takes a lot of intricate silent agreements and social. <laughs> not not online style but social networking and kind of <laughs> actual social network actual social networking and like uh unspoken you know rules spider webbing through society uh to make this function properly but the fucking like like you know as in simonon and and you know whatever it's like the rationale the crime itself is stupid it's yes. just like a guy who won't let some other guys uh get a job on his construction crew yep or whatever and then he just, he just gets killed and then and it's, that's and it. Then it it's spirals. like a stupid crime right and then it spirals because then they another realize guy. that someone else saw <laughs> one of them running away and then they have to kill him <laughs> and they killed that guy <laughs> but you're right it's that that it that it like the premise is also very simononian simon sim, <laughs> simononish Yes, um, Simononian sounds awesome. Simononian, so I like that uh, because that that's sort of one of the prevailing, you know, um, themes in Simonon is that the, the the crimes are just fundamentally dumb, not right. almost every time. 
Um, there's no like, annoying guy. Kill him. Yes. <laughs> and I think <laughs> I, I this guy sucks. Dumb dumb. Time, killed him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And I think that I think that Shasha sort of shares that that attitudinal approach with Simonon in a really like like strong way. Like there's nothing romantic about this book. Nothing. No. Uh, like it's 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 not it's not sort of you know we watch these sort of again and this is sort of an interesting cultural question about how we deal with things like the mafia in the west because you watch the godfather you watch godfather 2 you watch you know any of these sort of movies and it's it's undeniably romantic it's undeniably like sort of powerful and these people have you know auras and and it's it's sort of something that seems desirable in a certain way and there, there's really none of that in this book, and that that was something that I felt is um, was shared with Simonon in the sense that like Simonon has a similar sort of like schema for a lot of his books. Like dumb crime happens, uh, detective investigates, and it's basically who you thought it was from the second page, and then the book's over. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, yeah, it, it's like uh, the first four. We've said it before, but it's like the first forty-eight of crime novels. Yeah. <laughs> <Right. you know? laughs> Um, but yeah, that's one thing that I totally love about Simonon and I loved about this book too, is that like, I, I love the lack of romanticism in noir. Mm. And I think that noir can be classified as a little bit like goofy or silly because there is usually a romantic notion to it. Um, and it, 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 it <laughs> this is maybe off topic, but it's made me reconsider my love. Simonon in particular has made me re- reconsider my love for Blade Runner. Mm, because that's okay Blade interesting Runners, that's a that's a i want to it's yeah. a segue but it's it's you know such a noir film but it's so romanticized and in like a much hellish more hellish world than any world Simonon depicts um and i have a blade runner tattoo so i'm you know maybe i should get it covered up <laughs> <laughs> do you have the what is it the voight Kampf symbols what do you have no, it's more obscure. It's like a. It, I got it out of a sketchbook of one of the artists who, or the designers who worked. Is it on the, the little film. police car? Like when when it the the, the translates in the Chiron on, on under the screen. It's it's in the same realm, but it's actually it's not actually in the film because I'm that obscure. Oh, oh my god, dude! <laughs> dude, <laughs> it's too bad she won't live. But then again, who does? <laughs> That's my J- that Edward line. James almost. That's great. Sums up That's the very whole good. romantic element of noir, though, you know. And I feel like this book and Simonon's book, they 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 don't go to that level of romanticism at, ever. Well, it's never, yeah, it's. Not I think to say that's there super. Isn't writing though. Well, I, I think that's super interesting because, like, I think noir initially was was the world is this min- minatory kind of place that is gonna kill you and everyone. You know, like we like we talked about it from go with Shella, you know, like we started with yes. Shella and like um holds up, man. I like that book. Me too. I, 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 like you're right, there is a romanticism about it, but I think it's 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 partially in retrospect because uh, on a genre that has existed now for so long. Right. And it's also partially I think in, in because um because the relationships between people are so cut and dried in, in, in their, like, whatever, like, you know, black and white, like, two outcomes. Like, this person's out to fuck you over, or this person's a good, an honorable person who will get fucked over. Uh, there's some things that people like about that, because I think it's, like, simple. And what I like about Simonon and what I liked about this is that it plays with that. You know, Belodi is... And... Uh, and uh, Colas Berna and whatever, they're like comically almost, especially in the context of the book, like good people. Yes. <laughs> um, but the romanticism comes in because Belodi is like, he has that conversation with Arania or whatever, and he's like, um, He's 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 kind of titillated to be called a man. Oh, definitely by the Don. So remember the, yeah, the Don's like, yes. you're actually kind of a man. And so he's this like, is the this is like yeah. the guy who um, Don Marinera, ultimately <laughs> Don Marinara, dude, Don Olive Garden. Yeah, Don Olive Garden, and the police are just the Carbonara. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard to not had make to do those it. It's hard not to. You have yeah. to, dude. You my have people to. are my. I have ancestors that. 
are from Italy, so I can make fun all I want. <laughs> I still have I still have family that live. It's in Italy, never so racist to make fun of Italians. I will yeah. die on that fucking hill. I have no family from there, and I'm still gonna be. I don't like, give a shit. My wife is Italian, half Italian background. Anyway, but but yeah. So this is the the sort of like top of the food chain that Belodi is able to to identify the, the in terms of this crime. Yeah, um, uh, arena or yeah, arena. I, probably I don't know. I don't think they have. Are, I don't think they have enyes in Italian. Like you're right. It's probably arena or something. Um, arena maybe. Um, Don Mariano Arena. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, yeah. That that is a. That's a great scene where they have... It reminded me of, like... I don't know what it is. I don't know why I'm just a sucker for these sort of crime stories. But it, did, it reminded me a little bit of the diner scene from Heat. Where yeah. uh, fucking De Niro and Al Pacino are just talking and sort of, like, leveling with one another about, like, who they are Godfather and what they do. greats. Yeah, yeah. That movie's better. I love I love that movie. True, I'm just saying it no, I know, ties but yeah. in with... It, Exactly. Mob stuff. And so he gets him, he gets Arena uh, in the in the interview room and is getting basically nothing out of him, except yeah. he breaks at this one moment and is like, you know what? You're a real man, dude. And yeah. he loves it. And there's yeah, this like does. interplay. Yes. And that's why he ends up, yeah, you know, he, he does all this, you know, he's he's good police, right? Yes. Uh, and he does good all this police. good, yeah, the wire. Yeah. Uh, and I, he was does... <laughs> thinking, I was thinking Italian wire. Italian wire. <laughs> Italian wire. Oh, dude, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea of just saying Italian and then like something else. <laughs> Italian My Little Pony. <laughs> yeah, dude. Italian Dragon Ball Z. Mm-hmm. Italian Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> well, that's already pretty Italian with the. It's Michael pretty Italian with the with it's the pizza or whatever. The pizza, <laughs> fucking Donatello, Benedict. they're all named after Italian Renaissance people. <laughs> that, was the one, that was the one thing you probably shouldn't have said. It's already shut up, Italian. dude. Shut up. They're still they're fucking turtles. Whatever. Oh my god, that's so funny. That's so There's fucking a giant funny, bug dude. in my wall right now. I'm gonna kill it. There's a huge bug. Get it? No, dude. no, get, get after it. it. Fuck bugs. June bug, night bug. I don't even know. Um, House bug. But yeah, so 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 the there's there's like <sighs> a a, a, ro- <laughs> a romantic Godspeed, Paul. Uh, there's like a row. Fell down. There is just the right little drop of romanticism in there yes. to make it not be fully a noir thing to me. Right. Like. Uh, just like a guy who's like, oh man, I got played, but it hurts so good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue to be a policeman in Sicily. Yes. And there's, there's also a cultural tension there that I just don't understand fully, which is like, I, I, I kind of vaguely knew that there was like, uh, you know, it, not in the same way at all as like in America, but there is uh this northern and southern Italy cultural like animus between the two. Definitely. There. Definitely. Um. Where like Northern Italy is more classically liberal or whatever I I think and like uh, it's more rural down in Southern Italy and they were kind of more um, pleased and 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 saw the benefits more to f- the fascist regime. Yep. Um, kind of taking power. Uh, and so you got some of that in there with this, where like I think Belodi is from Parma. Yep. I, I, uh. And then he's he's stationed in Sicily, and everyone calls everyone's like fucking fancy pants northerner. Exactly. <laughs> they call him a polenta either. Yeah. Eater. Oh my I, god, I, that was so funny. <laughs> I was like, I love polenta, dude. Polenta is good, but that but that but but again, right? Like even in in a little a little moment like that, right, where they use a very kind of like intra intra cultural insult, like yeah. to you know we we think. We as like dum dum Americans, we're like, oh, uh, uh, yeah, polenta. That's Italy. But like to 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 these people from Sicily, calling someone a polenta eater is an insult because it's it's a different culture. Yeah, exactly. And so yeah, it, it, so th- that tension is also a big part of the book. Like Belodi is is this northern interloper, right? Who kind of you know has no business being there and and as he's sort of uncovering more and more information about this murder y- you realize that part of the the p- 
part of the tactic that the mob is is using is literally uh for people like Belodi, like kind of like righteous whatever uh is uh to get them so disgusted yes that they'll leave right and just and be like i just need the comforts of a, a place that actually has a police force that that you know serves justice or whatever i i, I don't feel like dealing with this yes exactly and I think that that's such a, you know, like that that's described so powerfully in the book to me and that comes through so clearly again, which is that, yeah, just that idea that like part of the way that they were able to keep such a, 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 a you know, an iron fucking grip on this, this, you know, part of the world was by you know, turning away or like, like, like it's they're just finding ways to make it not worth it. You know what I mean? For people to get in fucking involved, you know, yeah. and whether that's just like disgust or, you know, frustrating their professional ambitions as kind of happens in this book where he solves the crime and then it, all of his work just kind of vaporizes essentially like, like just yeah. seemingly randomly, which like would be like so maddening. Like I, I can't even imagine, um, the mafia oh. Thanos snapped all his work. Yeah, <laughs> That's right, dude. <laughs> it's literally. Right. I was literally. I was thinking of Review Bra once again. We always talk about beautiful yes. Review Bra, oh, but just beautiful. my uh, my disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. <laughs> <laughs> One of the uh, finest quotes. I know. Uh, I keep meaning to. There's a shirt on Etsy that has that quote on it. And I keep. I'm. I'm like. I look at it like every night. I'm like, should I buy this? $35? Should I pull the trigger? Yeah. Should I do that? Thirty-five dollars is a little steep, to be honest. But I know, but a t-shirt. Yeah, and where am I gonna wear it? Out in my house. Out. Yeah, in your house. You're gonna meet your best friend when they know what that is. Uh, What's in I Paul's was, house? Paul was thinking about buying a review brochure. I, I was saying that the book. <laughs> The book is like I, I was thinking about the quote. Uh, my disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. <laughs> yes, a classic. And that could have been Belodi, but yes. it wasn't. No, right. I wanted to read a, a paragraph. Yes. Um, uh, where there is an informer. Who it, who do they got at this point? Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of characters in this book, by the way. So it is a little bit difficult to keep everyone uh they're straight. also there's also this like uh is this Debella, the little priest yes yeah okay do, do you do you have this marked too i might but but yeah whose nickname is uh yeah paraniedu uh it goes um so he's sitting in front of Belodi, and he's the informer uh the informer would have been astounded to know that the man he was facing uh, a carabinieri uh, and an officer too regarded the authority vested in him as a surgeon regards a knife an instrument to be used with care precision and certainty a man convinced that law rests on the idea of justice and that any action taken by the law should be governed by justice his was a difficult and ungrateful profession but the informer only saw him as a happy man happy in the joy of being able to abuse his powers a joy the more intense the more suffering can be inflicted on others um Yes. Yeah. Uh and, and 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 that's, you know, the first instance I think we get of just like a a complete unbreachable ideological almost chasm yes. between between two people with just like totally fucking opposed perspectives. Uh and and why I like this book too a lot was just cuz you know th I mean it's fucking it's it's relevant authority yes, figures, dude. police like uh uh you know the methods of of curtailing inquiry and 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 like you see, yeah methods of making people disgusted and throwing up their hands and all this stuff uh and, i yeah, mean it's all and, relevant and and i think it it's another way in which that it, it it's totally relevant i think you're you're right matt like there's just thinking about policing and sort of like power and violence and whatever like there are moments in the book when you kind of get inside the head of one of Belodi's, um, you know, uh, inferiors, like one of the people that he's supervising and they see him 
you know, conducting interviews in a certain way or like talking to people in a certain way. And they're like, what the fuck? Like, just hit him. Yeah, like, what like, the fuck up. is this guy doing? <laughs> you know, yeah. Bel- like, Belodi is this very sort of like methodical, like empathic, like trying to like talk to people to get information out of them. And like, there's these other, you know, police officers around him who, we, when we hear them, when we hear their thoughts, are just like, this guy's like soft, dude. Like, what the fuck is he doing? Yeah, this is when you step on their neck. Bro. Right. Like, yeah, literally. Yeah. Yeah, they're like, why isn't he saying, say hello to my little friend? And he's hitting him with his fist. <laughs> That's kind of like, right. Giant, hard, uh, seasoned pepperoni meat or something. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> he Some just sort whips of... out a fucking salami, a Genoa yeah, I, salami, and just think, slaps their face. I'm pretty sure that would kill. during this time in Italy, they didn't have night six. They just had hard salami. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Billy clubs were different in there. <laughs> that, yes. <laughs> 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 Pepe clubs. That's good. Pepe <laughs> clubs. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. But, but I, yet, I, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. There's just an entire network of assumptions that's in place fully by yes. the time Belote gets there. So um, it, this is a pain a, in the ass to deal with. Yeah. It, it, I have a, I have, I actually have a lot of stuff to read that I want to read because I, the writing I thought was actually really good in this book. There's a lot of like good, like like little small moments, like little metaphors, little little phrases that that like by and large it's very straightforward. Like Shasha is a very straightforward writer. He mm-hmm. writes dialogue. He writes like here's the room. Here's what's going <laughs> on. But like there's these moments of just like. What? That's kind of a weird phrase. Or like, that's a really good and kind of bizarre metaphor. He shoots some just like f- little f- metaphysical and like philosophical yes. like sort of meditations just off the hip, just like in a sentence. Yes. Yeah. So this is um just just because it's sort of like germane to your last point, Matt, about the informer. I think this is from that same scene. Um, <clears throat> but getting to what I was talking about about the other police looking at Belodi and being like, what what is this guy fucking doing? Um, This is on 44, if you have the physical copy. Uh, We do. We all do. Okay, cool. So they're talking about um, they've gotten some new information. All right, said the captain wearily, and the sergeant major asked himself, what's up with the man? Disillusionment with with the captain had brought on a stab of homesickness. The ray of sun which slanted down on the table through the golden specks of dust shone for him on throngs of girls on bicycles on the roads of Emilia, on a filigree of trees against a white sky and on a big house where a town gave way to a cu- to country, a house mellow in evening light and in his memory. He repeated himself the words of a poet from those parts, where thou art missing from our hallowed evening custom, words written by a poet for a dead brother. In self-pity for his exile in his disillusionment, Captain Belodi felt a faint premonition of death. A- and I just love it. Like There's like little paragraphs like that just kind of like dropped in there. In, in the midst of all of this other, like, very straightforward, very accessible writing that are yeah. psychologically, like, very sort of sort of rich and culturally rich. And I, I thought it was really well done. Again, that reminded me of Simenon, for sure, right? Yes. Um, I, I have one I want to read about uh, the informant uh, who was, like, very fear-stricken. I, this is on page 27. Oh, I think I, I, think, I think I have this, too. It goes exactly what you're just saying. It's like... In the midst of just straightforward writing about what's happening, there's a, a great little paragraph of great characterization. <coughs> oh, sorry. Had it not been for his fear, has COVID. Inform- I do have COVID, <laughs> but I I got vaccinated, so I don't know. It's it's a it's a mutant. Oh shit! I haven't been vaccinated. I'm sorry. Uh, had it not been for the fe- for his fear, <laughs> the informer would have reckoned himself happy and an honest man, both morally and financially. But terror lurked within within him like a rab like a rabid dog, growling, panting, slobbering, sometimes suddenly howling in its sleep. For incessant gnawing at the liver and sudden painful stabs at the heart, like a live rabbit's in a, in a dog's mouth. Doctors had made a diagnosis after di- had made diagnosis after diagnosis and prescribed him enough medicines to fill his dressing table drawer. Of his terror, the doctors knew nothing. And I, I just thought that so was really, good. like Damn. almost psychoanalysis of this character. And it reminded me of just like a neurotic person who's just, you know, everyone kind of knows someone like that who's just like 
you know, succumbed by fear and it, it infiltrates their entire life and how they behave. And of course, like that character is a trope in some ways, kind of like the mousy, like fearful informant who's like working with the cops. But like you just imagine this guy being played by like Steve Buscemi, right? Like it's just like the, the or Bill Paxton. Or, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I was actually picturing the guy who played Peter Pettigrew. Yes. Yes. Or that guy. <laughs> yeah. Wormtail. Wormtail. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but wrong European country, but. Yeah, but it's it, it's captured so well. And there's another scene later in the book with this same guy who ultimately, because we're dealing with the mafia, someone finds out that he's working with the cops and he's ultimately killed, right? And there, I love him because he does function as as an example of the other uh, a way in which his environment works to, to, you know, like... He's so anxious. Yes. He's so anxious about looking guilty that he's guilty. Right. And eventually someone's like, this guy looks, he's sweaty and he's hes running <laughs> around. <laughs> like, he's guilty as hell. We're going to have to that shoot guy, him. That guy looks guilty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he only would be that way. He he only is that way because he's afraid of looking guilty. It's its so great. He's just like, he's like hyperstitious. Yes. And, 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 the, and the section later in the book, I'm trying to find it now, but... There's a section describing kind of his his last like days when he kind of like realizes like I've been fucking found out and I, someone's gonna fucking kill me, and it's so effective like just the descriptions of him kind of like wandering around the city in this like heightened state of like you know fear and like going back and forth about like should I lock myself up in my house or should I is it safer in public or like da 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 and like it's so well done i thought and so descriptive of like you said paul that kind of psychological state and 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 what it what it must feel like to sort of know that you're being watched and that people know what you're doing but being unable to sort of like see see back into that 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 window yeah and, it, and i think it tell it's it's also great because it's from the perspective of a, of a character like that i think that there's a lot of mob like characters or gangster like characters in the wire that had similar circumstances happen but they had like a different attitude about it because they were like you know chad men or whatever but <laughs> I, I like the i like the um the characterization <laughs> of this of this guy in particular and how he felt during a moment like that well i yeah it reminded me of um in 1984 uh winston right the main guy uh just you know, I again. It's been high school since I read that book, but like, the, I remember the phrase like he was just waiting for a bullet in the back of the head. Yeah, just constantly, just yes. his his neck and you know the parietal whatever occipital whatever the fuck part of his skull was like tingling. Yes, the entire time he was walking around the city, just waiting for a bullet to just go into it. Yes, uh, I, have a, I have an irrational fear about that. When I'm just sitting on my computer for hours, I have a fear that someone's just going to shoot me in the back of the head. My headphones on. That's how it's I'm afraid end. that every time I close my eyes, uh, every time I don't want to fall asleep. No, uh, uh, <laughs> that when I that as soon as I close my eyes to go to sleep, someone's face. Is like an inch from you've life. said this before, dude. God. That's so creepy. I've never said That's that on the horrible. podcast, not on the pod, but I've uh, personally. And once a year, thereabouts at this point, it it keeps me from being able to go to sleep for like a whole night. I'm gonna tell Sasha to just do that to you and like <laughs> activate. Oh, sorry, I probably said okay. That's... The author, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't, and then yeah. you'll just be terrified and forever. <laughs> just activate Miraculous. that phobia. I know where you live. I can, you know, I could be a little bit of a burglar. But in uh, Nevada, <laughs> yeah. Don't drive to Nevada. Matt man. lives in Carson City. <laughs> so, okay. I, can I just say one random phrase that I also please? I, I'm not. I don't even. I, I don't even have it marked down. I just remember that he's describing crows. Uh, yeah. flying around as though they were navigating a glass maze. Dude, that shit was so fucking good. I did. Mark I love it down. reading. Uh, dude, reading is good. <laughs> <laughs> Phrases are good. We love language. It's such a fucking beautiful encapsulation of their movement. Oh man, it was. It, it, yeah, dude. And th again, that's what I'm and saying. And it works like, with these... the theme. God. Yes. 
<laughs> well, wait, wait, expand on that. What do you mean? Like it works with th- with the themes? Just the, 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 these carrion birds, uh, uh, like looking down from high up on like the the efforts of these people to solve a crime and also but also just kind of instinctively moving in ways that can only be characterized as as like being moving through a maze which is exactly what the fucking you know uh, uh network of of sort of tribal and social connections via the mafia is i don't know it's, yes. it's just a beautiful it's just beautiful so resonant on and every level that's one of those things that like there's there's so many of those small moments one line one metaphor one phrase that are that are that are dropped in that just are fucking next level dude they're just like so <laughs> resonant they're just so resonant and so true and and so sort of like like you know I hate the phrase pregnant with meaning because that's a stupid Grab phrase it. that sucks, but it's good. It's they, and, and they are right. There's, it, it, they're so distilled, you know, it's like he's taking alpha yeah. brain or something. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he's fucking, he's fucking limitless. It's he's like on he nootropics uh, out of his ass. It's like he has weights and kettlebells with the, with a monkey's face on. Him or something. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's what? gotta be that Rogan. Um, Joe Rogan sells those. Huh? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> All right, can I read a long passage? No. Oh yeah. So I found the passage about yeah. the. No, Matt, you don't like it. Oh, I can't <laughs> I'm gonna have it. to. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to cancel that. <clears throat> so this is the, the 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 description of the last sort of moments of the informant's life before he's killed, and. Um, I, I just think it's so – it's on 54 and 55, and I may even go into 56 if I'm feeling spicy. Ooh, baby. Uh, I'll, take a, I'll take a little, little nap right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go take a nap. Go take a piss. Um, but, but I think this is like really captures all of kind of the things we've been talking about in terms of the writing. It's, it's, it, it's, it's on the ground. It's accessible, but it's also very kind of like psychologically profound. It's culturally and politically interesting. Um, so anyway – the last 24 hours of the life of Colagero de Bella, known as Parniedu, were spent in a kind of dream of crossing a boundless forest, thick as a bramble bush and so lofty and dense that it shuts out the light. For the time in his career as an informer, he had given for the Carbonieri a thread to pull, which, if they went about it the right way, could unravel a tissue of friendships and interests interwoven with his own existence. Usually, his information only concerned people outside these friendships and interests, Youths who saw a hold up at the cinema one night and went out the next day and held up a bus. Small time crooks, in fact, isolated and without protection. But this time things were different. It was true that he had given two names, one of which, La Rosa's, had nothing to do with the case. The other, though, was the right thread, a certainty. And ever since he had mentioned that name, he had known no peace. His body was a terror soaked sponge, absorbing even a gnawing liver and agonizing stabs at, his, at the heart. Pizzuco, who had invited him to a bitter vermouth at the Café Giulino, as so often in the past, was astounded at Perignedu's refusal and abrupt flight. Though not particularly bright, he wondered about it for the rest of the day. Perignedu, for his part, was so rattled that he spent the day attributing sinister meanings to that offer of bitter vermouth, bitter betrayal, <laughs> bitter death, overlooking the well-known fact that Pizzuco suffered from what the doctors called cirrhosis due to his fondness <laughs> for Averna's bitter vermouth. A beverage which made him proclaim his faith as separatist and ex-soldier of the volunteer army for Sicilian independence. Though according to police records, he had merely been a minor accomplice of the bandit Giuliano. Many others noticed Perignedu's uh, peculiar behavior. His apprehensive walk like someone with a mastiff at his heels. Those who feared him and wished to avoid him noticed it most. Then had come that meeting uh, with the man he feared most a man capable of knowing or guessing what he had uh, what had been said in confidence between office walls. He had pretended not to see him, turned a corner at once, but the other had seen him and followed him with his impassive gaze from beneath heavily lidded eyes. Since that meeting, the informer's last 24 hours had been all anguished frenzy, longing for flight which he knew to be impossible, alternated with visions of himself as a corpse. Flight was in the prolonged whistle of a train in the countryside unfolding from the train window, towns rolling slowly by full of bright flowers and women at windows, 
Then suddenly along came a tunnel, the word death hammered by, by the rhythm of the train and death's black waters closing over him. Without realizing it, by three days of anxiety, of false steps, of visible apprehension and nervousness, he had dug his own grave. Now he thought he'd be shot down like a dog, but he thought death was coming to him because of his betrayal, that it was known or suspected, and not because his terror had turned to madness and that he had become the living image of treachery. <laughs> The two names he had let slip were only in the memory of the Captain Belodi, not, who, not wishing to have another corpse on his hands, had every intention of protecting the informer. But Perignedu, his nerves ra ragged from anxiety, saw his information floating around like chaff. Beyond hope, at dawn of what was to be his last day, he wrote the captain two names on a flimsy sheet of airmail paper and the words, I'm dead. Then, as if finishing off a letter, ended with regards, Collegero de Bella. He posted the letter while the town was still deserted. All that day he spent either wandering around the streets or rushing home a dozen times, determined to shut him up there, and then coming out as many times to get himself killed once and for all. Just, just when he had finally made up his mind to hide, two unerring pistol shots got him on his own doorstep. I, I just, it's so fucking good. Like, that's fucking good. That was good. beautiful. I, I beautiful. woke I woke up from my nap, caught a little, the end. I was having a, I was having a weird dream. I was in a plane crash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you, what are you, Buddy Holly? Yeah, Sorry, Buddy, Buddy Polly. What are you, Aaliyah? That was a Tim and Eric reference. I'm too sorry. soon, too soon. <laughs> okay. No, it's not. No, but you, that, yeah, totally. So anyway, yeah, yeah, I just I love that description. It's like it's so you know it's it's. I don't know. I, I felt it. I felt like I was in the dude's head, and I felt the fear. I felt the tension. I felt the eyes on me that I didn't even really understand. Yeah. And he it reminded he, me of a little bit of uh, Matt Damon's character in uh, The Departed, um, yeah. just to have a mob movie reference of some kind, I guess. Good movie. <laughs> but um, kind of like that, that cowardice uh, character, and he ends up dying and. I think the last words of Matt Damon in that movie is just like, just fucking do it. Right. Just, just do it. <laughs> right. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm more, I'm just more sick of the fear than I am, uh, fearing death at this moment. No, that's exactly yeah. right, dude. And I feel like that, that passage describes that feeling so well. And that, 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 that's like part of how these organizations operate so effectively. Like, the, the, the fear, the fact that you know you're being like watched and you know it's coming. Is so much worse than it actually happening. Right. And that's how so much sort of arbitrary power tends to yes. establish itself also is just like it gets, uh, you know, sort of it gets to live rent free in your head, so to speak. And and <laughs> exactly. you just behave. I mean, this is the panopticon. This is whatever. It's like this is you get to behave as though. Italian you, Foucault. It's <laughs> <laughs> Behave it's all the Italian same Italian. anyway. The, the mafia is Italian Foucault. <laughs> <laughs> you just like yeah, you, you you live in hell already. You just you've made it. You just do it. Yes. You just made it for yourself. And then yes. eventually someone's like, "That guy's in hell. We should kill him." <laughs> 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 well, and I and I also think just just literarily. And we haven't talked about this yet, really, but th the book is kind of divided between there's sections about um, uh, the detective Baloney, sort yeah. of like working on the Bologna. crime, interviewing Can people. We call him Bologna? Bologna. There's <laughs> there there's sections of Baloney and the sort of like crime work, and um, but then there's also these other sections, and there's only like four or five of them that are sort of describing the behind the scenes like mafia reaction to the information they're getting about Belodi's investigation. Right, just unnamed speakers. And those those sections to me were some of the most effective in the book. Like I thought they were so eerie and creepy and like just conveyed that sense of this like faceless, nameless like organization like behind the scenes so well right because they were just like sitting there like ah geez what did what did the little priest do right all right so here's how we're spinning this they were like pr guys basically yeah they're like okay like 
shit. All right, he said. All right, so like, what we're gonna do is this, and like, and they're yeah. and like you said, Matt, they're never named. They're only ever described as like the man in white, the man in black, the old man, the young man, like. Right. And it, to me, that was so fucking eerie and creepy. Yeah, I thought so too. I mean, I think that this book, like in in particular those chapters, they um they gave me a sense of what the mafia can be perceived like especially at, during that time um because most of my perception of the mafia is just you know joe pesci being like oh, i'm gonna stab that fucking guy in his butthole you know it's just like lame <laughs> stupid right, like right, right. monkey people that are just you know out for violence but it, it is a creepy thing to think especially during this time where it's like a new it's a new thing the mafia right. is like pretty freaking new and it, it it's more like you know the, like i said before the league of shadows like these shadow people that are just taking people out. And yeah, th those passages and those chapters were totally eerie. And I haven't had that sense of eeriness thinking about the mafia, maybe ever. Same. I was, yeah. I was genuinely fucking creeped out by those sections because it's yeah. just like, it conveys that sense of like detached, like omniscient power, like so well, because like we're invested in the story. We're invested in Belodi and um, all the people he's interviewing and the crime. But then those sections like pull us back to this perspective that like is doesn't give a shit about the, that specific crime at all. Right. Like there's much bigger things going on. Yeah. And they're just sort of like it's so it's so casual. Right. They're just like, oh, yeah, this guy needs to. um you know, there's a there's a line where it's like, oh, they're talking about one of the guys that Belodi's arrested, and they're like, oh, I remember he's got a cousin in this town. He should probably take a visit to see her. And it's just like so fucking creepy, like so creepy, and it's so just you know, again, like the 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 world. It's almost like a sort of like world building thing, right? Like because. Like oh, we, so this we, is soft. Is this it's soft sci-fi. I would. Soft, I would actually fantasy. give this book. I would actually give this book like, th like, in the mid fours on sci-fi elements. Oh my god! Out of, 10, out, of out of ten. Out of ten. Out of ten. Okay, out of ten. Out of ten. Okay. Um. But but. <laughs> <laughs> but but it is like you know, you know those moments where you get pulled back into the perspective of the like wider organization. And it and 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 this individual crime and this individual detective become like fucking like, you know, ants from an airplane. You know what I mean? Like you really get a sense of the scale of this organization because like these guys ultimately they don't care. They're like joking and they're getting drunk and they're dancing and they're talking about it and whatever. And like someone's like, oh yeah, doesn't this guy, uh, you know, yeah, he's he's got a sister in this town. He should probably fucking take a visit to be with her for a few months. And it's just like so dark and creepy to me. Yeah, it reminded me of uh, I don't know. It reminds me of a lot of stuff, but it, it it made me think. You know, when when you think about those sorts of people in a realistic way, I think of like the interviews I've I've seen with like the Iceman murderer. Have you seen any of those? <laughs> no, Obviously, who's the Iceman? He was a hitman, I think, oh, okay. for the mob, but he killed just yeah. so many people. I was just watching a documentary about Pablo Escobar last night, and uh, he had. He had someone similar on his payroll. Mm. And it made me think, I just watched The Deuce a few months ago. I don't think you guys have watched that, but there's a psycho guy in that who ends up, like, killing his mob boss. Spoilers. And it's horrible, and he has, like, you know, pure cold blood. But, I mean, I think one thing th this whole thing makes you think of, too, is just, um, just kind of how, <laughs> for lack of a better word, how monkey-brained and stupid the organization is uh and how just you know inhuman the people are and that adds an element of coldness but it also adds an element of just like wow these people are freaking stupid i mean ob it's an obvious statement people who are in the mafia are just like cold-blooded stupid moron guys but um yeah i don't know i, I mean i think like i, I don't know I, I obviously i don't know enough about i'm not in the mafia to the FBI, to the FBI people who are listening to this. But, but like, I also think that, like, they, you also get a sense of, because there's so much, um, like, disdain in the hierarchical structure, right? Like, the people at the top view the people below them as, like, basically garbage. Like, they're just, like, these, like, 
the the word cuck is used a lot in, Dude, this, I was, in this book. I was going to say, well, there should a, be a, we yeah. should bracket some time to just even talk about cuckoldry. Definitely. As its, as its own standalone idea here, because people are, I, not since 2017 have I seen so much cuck just <laughs> thrown around. Yeah. And it's, it's a controlling idea almost. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Like it's it's a it's a very sort of animating um you know concept for the people in these organizations. Like that's that's it's not quite like the ultimate form of disrespect, but it's pretty damn fucking close. Um you know Arena Don Mariano Arena has like a hierarchy of like it's like men, half yes. men, pygmies cucks and then there's one below that yes um and I, I forget i probably have it somewhere in here but i forget exactly what it is and that sort of like structures his understanding of the world um right and all and 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 he is sort of like because he's the don and he's sort of the closest he's not the head but like he's he's right. very, he's the closest you're gonna get in the in the book um you know the one of the obvious controlling things about fascism and, and why it, you, uh, in Italy and why like it flits back and forth and, and how the mob is like an offshoot of not of, of a having escaped fascism, but still like needing to is hierarchy basically yes. is hierarchy. Yes. Like, like just, you know, and, 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 and obviously, you know, the closest you get to the, to the top of that hierarchy you get someone who's a better at clamming up, right? And B yep. is way more committed to the notion that people all fall into categories that go from like the base of the fucking pyramid to the apex of the pyramid and you regard them as such and there's no there's no gray zone and that's how he's able to function the way he does where he's like, yeah, no, there are men and then there are some gradations and then there are just fucking animals people who basically are i could kill yes because they're 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 just like fucking a cow or something so do you think you it's know? like sort of like a coping mechanism almost yeah i mean like you the dehumanization right is a classic of uh i i think Words. mental cope so that you don't end up suffering the fallout of horror right for what you might do to somebody so I found the passage where he describes this sort of worldview that he has. Okay. And then and then there's a really interesting kind of like sort of like Nietzschean like postscript to his description that I think is like worth talking about. Um so this is in the in the interview between Belodi and and Don Mariano. Um and uh so Belodi had asked him a question about one of the other cops in the room, like, oh, what about the what you know, what do you think about this guy? I don't know, said Don Mariano, scrutinizing him with what, for the sergeant, was unwelcome attention. I, went on Don Mariano, have a certain experience of the world and what we call humanity. All hot air, that word. I divide into five categories. Men, half-men, pygmies, arse crawlers, if you'll excuse the expression, nice. and quackers. Men are very few indeed. Half-men, few, and I'd be content if humanity finished with them. But no, it sinks even lower to the pygmies who are like children trying to be grown-ups, monkeys going through the motions of their elders. Then down even lower we go to the arse crawlers who are legion. And finally to the quackers. They ought to just exist like ducks in a pond. Their lives have, <laughs> their lives have no more point or meaning. But you, even if you, nail me to, even if you nail me to these documents like Christ to his cross, you're a man. So are you, said the captain, not without emotion. Then, with a twinge of discomfort at having exchanged a, exchanged a present arms with a head of the mafia, he tried to justify this by remembering that he had once shaken hands with Minister Mancuso and the Honorable Member Lavini as representatives of the people, surrounded by fanfares and flags amid the din of national holiday. Unlike them, Don Mariano, at least, was a man. Beyond the pale of morality and law, incapable of pity, an unredeemed mass of human energy and of loneliness, of, of instinctive, tragic will. As a blind man pictures in his mind, dark and formless, the world outside, so Don Mariano pictured the world of sentiment, legality, and normal human relations. <laughs> what other notion could he have of the world if, around him, the word right 
had always been suffocated by violence, and the wind of the world had merely changed the word into a stagnant and putrid reality. Right. And and there you get a bit of like, hey, you know, there th- that that's your that's your uh twinge of empathy. Yes. Kind of. Yes. You know, like this person's been uh uh mutated. Right. By the by the environment to a certain degree. Right. Which I I think that uh, you know, again, you know, I don't know, I don't know if it's um I don't know if we should be making Simonon comparisons so often, but I was just going to, I was just going to say like, this reminds me of a Simonon trope. Yeah. (laughs) Go go ahead, Paul. Well, just, just that like the environment has an inevitable ability to morph any given person's personality. And it also reminded me a little bit of um, the museum of unconditional surrender is like the society you live in and the circumstances surrounded the history of your society and your country how can that not invade each individual's personal psyche? Right. And I, th- yeah, I think that this, it, the, you know, the passage Gabe just read, I feel like it totally falls into that category of just like, you know, not being able to avoid that, that kind of thing. And it's yeah. Tragic and bad and sad and good writing. It's funny. Like, you know, like y- s- certain ages produce monsters or, or whatever, you know, like, I, I think I, what I liked is is it when and how often this kind of idea emerged, right? Like pretty sparingly. The book the the book is very short, um, and like you know, you, right? Like obviously it it can become iffy, right? Like men, men in a certain age will will only do what they were always going to or something like that where you, you've I but I don't think he completely relinquishes personal responsibility is just like no this dude's a monster like right historically like he's kind of been corralled into this mindset and that's also shitty like I I just I appreciated the 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 light touch of like you know I don't, you know what I mean? Like this, this, this man was led here to a certain degree. There's a context. Like other there's, a, there's a story. Things. There's a story there. That's what I'm trying to agonizingly fucking say. Yeah. Yeah. Books have stories. This book had a story. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> and we read it. And we read it. Yeah. Good. But, but yeah, you're right, Matt. Like there's, there's, there, there is a background, right? Like there is a reason a dude like Don Mariano is the way he is. And, you got to complicate it. You're not dealing with a villain exactly. like, per se. It's always good to complicate somebody who's uh, uh, just some sort of monstrous, cartoonish villain. You know, it's like you got to you got to make it a little more complicated than that because it always is. Yes, and I feel yeah, like, or yeah, not yeah, always, but you know, mostly yeah. It's it. like uh, if you're a Marvel DC fan, it's like Steppenwolf <laughs> or Thanos. <laughs> you know, who, who would you rather have? Yes, <laughs> who's more believable? Right. <laughs> just playing up my idiot role a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're but, but no, but you're right. And I mean, I think that that's part of the tension sort of that that Shasha's like negotiating is that in in crime novels, right? And like we can go back to the we can go back to the sort of classic, you know, like like pulps, like the Dashiell Hammetts and like all that like who were sort yeah. of like, you know, on the the um the bleeding edge of like introducing like flawed protagonists and sort of like all, yes, all of that sort of thing. Yeah. Right. Um, Shasha is like sort of on the other end of that spectrum in this book. And like, from my understanding, I read the introduction, which I thought was very good. It was short, but it, it was, it was very helpful mm. um, by uh, George Shalaba. Shalaba. I don't know. Um, and he talks about how sort of, you know, Shasha in this book is more interested in the villains than he is in the heroes. And like, like you said earlier, Matt, the victim of the, of the original crime and the detective, they're both just kind of like straightforwardly good people, right? Like they just like do the good things and have the good motivations and whatever. But on the, on the sort of villain side, if you want to put it that way, 
he's deeply invested in complicating those personas in making right. those stories sort of more, you know, fleshed out. Yeah. How did sense. this, how did this, how did, how do human beings metastasize into like this malignant, right. Almost cybernetic network of, of nodes in a brain, you know, that like they're all loyal to each other and know their function and operate based on how the, their immediate, uh, information about how some other note is operating like comes in and yes yeah. it's just that it's more it's more interested in, in essentially like how the mafia grew right and functions and the, the, and those descri- you know you're talking about like the sort of like the nodes and the sort of like um right like almost like rhizomatic like nature yeah, of yeah. this fucking organization and there's so many again like those sections where he's describing the the interactions between the nameless, faceless members of this organization who, like, they just refer to themselves as, like, honorable men or whatever, which is, like, right. so just, just perfect. <laughs> right. Um, but uh, there's a couple scenes, right? There's one where there's a guy who, like, it wakes up and, and like, by a phone call when... Um, the detective is sort of getting closer to the answer to the case and someone calls him and is like, Hey, we need to do something about this. And he's like, okay. And then he calls like three other people and they all have conversations. And I I don't know, it was like very effective at sort of like conveying that, like, you know, rhizomatic spread of information and relationships and, and all that sort of stuff. Right. And it's like, but once again, what what I think is funny is that the the functions are very simple. Yeah, it's like deny it, deny it, and then when they can't deny it, they're like, just deny it. But also, let's give a bullshit story. Right. It's like right. Th- I just love how it's like it, the formation of such a th- an entity is complicated, but its function and like what it's trying to even like cover up or, or deny is also stupid and, and and very like straightforward right i just love that like but it's only capable of doing this dumb thing this dumb evil thing yep uh for reasons that are that are that are deeply complicated yes and 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 require that like you said that kind of historical context of causation and that would will allow for the growth of something like this yes which well, is you know a na- international I think that what makes it interesting for me too is like it is like deeply rooted in a lot of um you know historical circumstances like the rise of the mafia or whatever but it it also feels like a lazily organic process that was inevitable it's like an an inevitable evil that is going to spawn right. like a slime mold just growing on something yeah and it, <laughs> yeah and that also makes me, makes me think of simina as just like and I like I like thinking about it as like a lazy evil, just and something that kind of is it, it's it's birthed, um, and it it just almost feels inevitable. It um it's sort of, it's sort of like an Arendtian thing, right? Like the banality of evil. Like it's like this shit just kind of like grows and and populates and like spores, like you said, Matt. Like and mm-hmm. and 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 it just sort of self replicates in ways that are not necessarily intentional not necessarily sort of like you know planned uh down to that that, that sort of level of detail and it's funny paul that you mentioned that that like spread metaphor because there's a great scene where two members of the of the mafia unnamed again as always go observe a debate in the italian parliament uh, or in the, the 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 like Italian government body or whatever. Do you guys remember this? Yeah, yeah. And um, they're sitting up in the in the sort of you know seats watching these guys debate. Um, uh, I forget I forget specifically what the issue was, but it's these 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 mafia guys who are watching the Italian government. And um, that metaphor just struck me that you use. This is on one eleven. Uh, well, I'll start on 110. It, it, it took a little time before the abstract concepts of left, center, and right ap- applied to the concrete topography of the house and to the more familiar faces. When Togliati's face emerged from behind a newspaper, they realized they were looking at the left, 
Then, with the slow precision of a compass, they swung their gaze towards the center, paused for a moment on the face of Neni, on that of Fanafi, and came to rest uh, on the member to whom they owed the spectacle. He seemed to be looking at them too, and they waved, but, lost in his own thoughts, he did not notice. What impressed them most was the constant coming and going of messengers from bench to bench, like shuttles imparting to the hall the mechanical movement of a loom. A hum of low, persistent talk rose, which seemed to come from an empty vault rather than from the groups of persons sitting on the amphitheater benches, haggard and absorbed. Every now and then a bell rang. Then a voice began to float on that sandy light, spreading like a patch of oil over the gradually increasing murmur of the hall. They were unable to locate the source of this voice until their eyes traveled down from the president of the assembly who was ringing the bell to what, when present, must have been the government bench where they saw sitting near the man speaking, Minister Pella. And like that, it, it's that same metaphor, this like idea of like this spreading like a patch of oil on water. And that's kind of like the way that the organization sort of functions. It mixes, but it also kind of like floats above. But and and the, that's the parliament too, which is funny because like you just have mafia observers, but like the parliament is functioning on its own accord, and also it sucks. Yes, <laughs> right. Like that's the other thing is just like uh, we've we're on mainland Italy now. Yes, and these are your act. This is the actual like quote unquote like yeah you know sophisticated democratically elected government and it's just still people like <laughs> well, the, well i think that i think that it clear like that passage and there's a few other passages like that that feel very i hate to bring this into the discussion maybe but feels very political Pol political um it's a political book you. You, you can't I just, there's I just no way like around Shasha, it yeah he totally i think he has a more clear view and a clear clearer statement than simonon does about his own personal politics oh definitely Definitely. I think that uh, yeah. I actually wanted yeah. to read one passage that w what I took as reading this now in 2021 mm -hmm. uh, as just like a clear, <laughs> like a clear um, disdain for even a capitalistic society. Uh, it's on uh, 76 in the middle. Um, life, you underlined it? Sick. Yeah. Same mind, great minds think about pepperoni. Uh, life was all <laughs> life was all tribulation, lack of money, the, the temptation to play Zicinetta. Zicinetta, motherfucking man. I, my mamia. The sergeant mayor's searching eye, other people's good advice, and and work above all, the hell of having to do a day's work, work work which is which degrades one to an animal level. Enough of it all. Better sleep on it. And indeed, sleep, dark, amorphous, was again taking possession of all of all of his thoughts. Yes. I was like, wow, this guy just like thinks people shouldn't work. Star Trek Society. <laughs> yeah, that's a takeaway. <laughs> yes. I mean, I, yeah. I, I underlined it, too, for similar reasons. Like, you know, it's 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 clear. And again, like. OK, this is something that I do think is, is resonant with Simonon. Like, I, I think you're totally right that Simonon, Simonon is more in the sort of like interpersonal existential sort of realm of this genre. And Shasha, at least from what I've read here, is the first book I've read of his, s strikes me as more overtly political. Um, but that, that, that paragraph that you just read also seems like something that I could hear m my gray saying. Like it, it could it oh, could yeah. be about my gray as well. Like there's this exhaustion and the sort of like sense of like this shit isn't worth it. Like why am I doing this? Right. Yeah. I felt that there are a lot of parallels between my gray and Bologna. Yes, for sure. We're well, just kind of to what end appended to like whatever situation constantly has relevance, but like in every shifting context too. You know, like right. why, 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 why. I was thinking, now that you talked about that, I was thinking of this thing on 50 and 51. Uh, so, in 27, the young man said, 1927, during fascism, things were different. Mussolini named members of parliament and mayors. All right, Gabe underlined that too. Uh, did just what he liked. Nowadays, it's the people who elect. And then, I forget who's saying this, but uh, the people, said the old man, sneering. The people were cuckolds then, and they still are. The only difference is that fascism <laughs> hung only one flag on the people's horns, and democracy lets everyone hang one on his own horns and choose his own color. 
We're back to the old argument. Not only men, but entire nations are born cuckolds. Cuckolds from olden times, generation after generation. <laughs> it's so good. Damn. It's and, just like... And yeah. it's so relevant. Like, like that's sort of the discussion that we're having today in some ways. A hundred percent. Like, from, from the resuscitation of the term cuck... Yes, dude. To, like, which is just hilarious, you know, in 61. And then, like, uh, yeah, to the notion of, like whatever this this feels almost like it has like revelations with like identity politics and absolutely like, like this idea of like, atomization like 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 draping a rainbow flag over <laughs> what is shitty like something that's ultimately terrible and sucks you know like mm-hmm. that it's this it's the same sort of discussion and either way everyone's just constantly always sort of rallying towards something that will degrade them yes was that the guy that had the the dog in the town, or the... I, I, I'm trying to remember the context of that. It, it, it doesn't... I kind of forget. It was like a older... Um, yeah. Caught a, like, cop. But it's... it it Like, that That's passage is so cop. interesting, not only because it's, like, so resonant with a lot of the d- discussions we're having today, but also, like, it, it, it shows, you know, or it illustrates the, like, Shasha's nuance... With understanding the sort of like, um, or or his ambivalence about fascism, like it's like, like people who lived under fascism saw and 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 can sort of isolate. You know what? That was that part of it was kind of good. You know what I mean? And right. like there were things about it that were potentially valuable, and he articulates that sort of organically in the text through those kind of small conversations. Um, and, and I think that that is like so interesting. Right. There's like a yeah. re there's a contemporary reassessment of democracy. I feel like that's going on. Definitely. I thought you were going to say contemporary. Re- <laughs> I mean, <laughs> kind of. yes, in a sense. Kind yes. Of. I, I, I personally wish I had more to contribute to that <laughs> dialogue right now, but not really. I just noticed that like, you know, certainly people are like more readily willing to go like, I don't know b- about the concept. Um, I mean, there was just an article published in um, whatever that conservative magazine about like, you know, because everyone's talking about voting rights and shit recently. And there was literally mm-hmm. an article that someone published. It was just like, well, you know what? Maybe less voters would be better. And yeah. it's it's been Good causing God. like a lot of drama. I know. Yeah. 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 But but again, I'm saying like relevant at like relevant topics relevant conversations right things that have not it's not like you're reading an old book you're reading a book it's not even old i mean but like you know i mean yeah it sort of is everything's it's accelerated from, it's from the 60s yeah we're 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 in an asymptotic relationship with time exactly at the uh <laughs> but I'm just yeah picturing uh jordan peterson commenting on that sort of article Oh, like, he would oh, he, he would love if it. Your IQ is abo- is not one hundred. Why would you possibly be able to vote? You yep. can't even operate. That's kind of what it says. He's too busy arguing with another insufferable person about being called Red Skull in a comic book. <laughs> oh my god, dude. <laughs> yeah, I saw that pop up and I'm like, I'm not watching this. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah, just don't. not going to watch this. Yeah. Are there twelve or fourteen rules for life? <laughs> huh. Huh. Here oh, I'm I'm gonna make a million dollars off a book I just wrote. Here's the thirteenth rule for life. Wipe your ass. Wipe <laughs> clean the clean the stinky doo-doo out of your butthole. That's the <laughs> that's my that's my thirteenth rule. If you if you clean the fucking corn uh poo-poo out of your butt, then you're gonna be a smart, good person. That's morally, you know, it's morally correct to wipe your yeah, ass uh, clean. The one thing that the French had right was they had bidets. <laughs> and I'm, in my 13th rule for life, I'm going to write an entire chapter about the bidet and how you should clean your <laughs> rum and clean your asshole. Clean your rum and your bum. Oh, God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I just wanted to touch on towards the end. Um, there's a bit where, hold on. 
in that section, um, in that section where they're the, the the two unnamed mafia agents are visiting the parliament, the mm-hmm. ending of that section creeped me out so bad because there he's describing Shasha's describing basically like basically chaos on the floor of the Italian parliament. Like people are yelling, they're having to yeah. be like physically restrained from like assaulting each other mm-hmm. and and blah 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 blah. And the he ends that section in this way this is the two uh mafia guys talking to one another they need a battalion of car- carabinieri here thought the two admitting for the first time in their lives that carabinieri might have some use <laughs> they looked they looked down towards their friend the honorable member he was quite unperturbed noticing their look he waved with a smile <laughs> like that's so creepy to me like this guy who's just sitting there down in this chaos Right. knowing knowing that that everything for him is going to be fine like he's in perfect control just giving this like creepy smile and wave right. of these two mafia guys <laughs> in the midst of like chaos on the senate floor or the parliament floor oh my god that was so creepy to me yeah i know just some like being there just like some idiot yes <laughs> he's like hey but also but also like just not even necessarily like being an idiot but just like knowing that none of this mattered to him like he was gonna be fine. All of this chaos, all of this like drama and shit, it's all performative. Like he's in control. You know what I mean? Like, ugh, right? Creep me out. Just like like the, the uh, because like what 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 were the arguments? It was like um, I forget what they were actually debating. Well, it's uh, just in in broad strokes. It's just funny because Shasha's so good at this uh. uh Again, it's it's not centrism. He he is somebody like there is a uh, coda to this book, and like he does describe the need to, um, which is hilarious. Yes, uh, to be kind of uh, careful about criticisms. It's not something you can do as willy nilly at that point in Italy, apparently. And he's just kind of like, look, you know, any 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 likeness to any living individual or person living or dead is entirely coincidental. So like, funny. like I'm not. I swear to God, I'm not talking about any specific person. Like, you know, there is a bit of like he's probably pulling his punches. Uh, well, I he think says it, specifically like he he removed names. He review he removed like identifying. He edited down like yeah like a like a ton of pages out of this and yeah really pared it down so that it wouldn't um get flagged and he wouldn't be in trouble um, or, or killed i mean like it, it, it that right, was like mafia, some, some real yeah. shit like if he's like identifying government members who he thinks are identified in the mob like that 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 actually could be like life and death shit at this time yes but so like yeah it, it it's the difference between somebody going it, it's kind of like ah chang right it's like yes dude. It, you, you gotta like toe the line ah. And, and and ah yes okay uh sorry where where where, <laughs> where it's like where chang right got hit with the centrism criticism yep and and as far as i can tell i don't think that's what was happening like like it was a person who Definitely just had not. to be fucking walk on eggshells and be really careful and in a sense kind of uh be the balance like I criticize everybody. And at, at least you know, and, and at Are least you saying sort of Ah like, was the Dave Rubin of post now <laughs> no. China? I'm joking. That's I'm joking. so I'm joking, dude, I'm joking, I'm joking. That's so <laughs> offensive what you just said. <laughs> I know, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's so offensive. That's way more. You could have just said a slur, and it would have been less offensive than saying David Rubin has anything to do with this. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Gabe's canceled for that. Um, God damn Dave it. Rubin is JK. worse than a slur. <laughs> Put that out there. That's actually <laughs> true. Kind of, I actually agree with that. It is true. He's so stupid. <laughs> he's so stupid. The funny thing about the, him, though, is that I feel he's like breath. He he's one of these people that is breathtakingly stupid. It, more like Dave. Like, more like Dave Poobin. 
<laughs> he has like no clout though, which is funny about him. Like his following is pretty minimal. I That's think. not true. He's got millions of subscribers on YouTube. <laughs> I feel like people use him non negligible. Like, a block. like the people that like love Jordan Peterson will just be like, oh, I'll watch a Dave Rubin video too because I love Jordan Peterson. So In a much. pinch. Yeah, exactly. It's like. <laughs> It's like methadone, yeah, right? Ex- yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's 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 like it's like someone snorting Adderall and they can't get coke. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All my only point being uh, that these two people were in politically charged, definitely situations where you know you couldn't just be like fuck this person. Um, but but what is so interesting and what uh i i think tends to happen is that right like per usual restriction kind of like breeds a, a much more in, like creative approach yes uh and the limitations are 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 good creatively uh and so like like shasha in this parliamentary scene it, you can He's he's voicing two really broad positions, right? Like that are again are 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 relevant to now, where it's like it's just basically conservatives. Uh, you you uh, you're backwards, right? Like you, you you've uh, you contributed to the rise of fascism. Uh, right. Through a lot of your rhetoric, and then everyone's like, "Okay, but also liberals, you're you're degenerates, right?" And and you allowed <laughs> you you your loose morals allowed the mafia to exist, and both are sort of blaming each other for the same, yes, the same situation, and no one is making progress towards any actual solution. Yes. No, I think that's totally right, and I think like it, it's funny that you mentioned the sort of like restriction, like breeding, creative, like quality in some ways because he talks about specifically and my reading of that that afterward that 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 shasha wrote um was that like he like i i was thinking specifically in the sections where he's talking about these like unnamed high level mafia figures i my my view or my reading of it was that like he had moved removed names from those sections where you know where where we get the brown, the guy, in, the guy in brown, or the guy in white, or the guy in black, or the old man, or the young man, in the original draft of this, may, might have had actual names attached to them. Oh yeah. And I think, yeah, like, I think, and I think it's much more effective for his point to have them be anonymous. And he mentions that, like, and the book might be better for it for that I've had to remove these names. And I think that's completely true. I think you're right, but I also kind of wish there was like a Tommy, a Tommy. Uh, two tits in there you know or just like a a timmy scarface dude there 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 is though i was about to say i I wrote dick tracy (laughs) just as a kill my joke i'm not gonna kill your joke i'm trying to i'm yes anding bro donnie 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 feats the ingioria or whatever yes the 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 idea of of a a a nickname based off of your physical appearance yes very funny just yeah. like that is that is something that has come overseas to the U.S. in terms of like you know and it's, it's very real. Yeah, it's that's that's uh, you know fatty fatty two tits Tony and that's fucking <laughs> big lips Johnny and just shit like that like that's, you know Tommy Feets. Yeah, Johnny I mean the remember pepperoni pizza. Yeah, pepperoni nipples Johnny and uh, <laughs> big mole on his fucking forehead uh, Pizzacola. <laughs> Let's be real though. Everyone, everyone would be named probably Pizza because I think Italian people just carry around pizza. <laughs> <laughs> everyone would have the same name. That 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 that's fucking calamari butthole Polly. <laughs> what is that? Uh, did you guys ever watch that movie Mafia? Yes, no. that's so uh, good. Whatever is just like there's a guy with <laughs> that. That's a uh, Jimmy with a big big red ass baboon on his head, <laughs> Pilotti, and there's a guy with a monkey on his head. <laughs> <laughs> so Just, but it's literally making fun of a naming convention which i didn't realize had had a basis it was real Culturally, me either which is that was news to me in or whatever which is literally means little injury yes which is like an insult that becomes a nickname it's yep. I, I thought that was actually really 
funny and kind of informative. Well, and that's part I, of the, that, that's part of the way that Belodi is able to identify one of the key people in the case, right? Because he's named like after the card game that he's addicted to, exactly. And so they find him in a parlor playing the card game. Yes, and I, and, and it's so the, like it, again, dude. That was so yeah. Sorry, Paul. Go ahead. I was gonna say it adds to the st- like in general the stupidity of the mob it's just like i'm gonna name this guy after the thing he does oh this guy's fat like, you're fat 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 dave yeah oh, this is johnny card player at uh 56 and uh, thompson <laughs> boulevard pepperoni man yeah this is this is like, um, oh i wonder where he is this is this is this is cosimo orders a fucking eclair and coffee at uh <laughs> so and so's on 34th at 3 30 a.m Oh Piccoli, <laughs> like God got him. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that 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 that's Don. That's Don David. Uh, eight seventy five Main Street, Paulo. <laughs> <laughs> this is Johnny. Shops at John. Ah, it's just a, it's just a nickname. It's just a nickname. <laughs> just a nickname. Doesn't mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> there was um I'm gonna try and find it. You guys can stall for time, but there was something that was like Oh, here we go. This yeah. was the most Italian thing. Let's go. In the book. Where I was like, all right, this is Sicilian. Like, there's no way like I we're being funny right now, right? We're talking about, you know I hope so. Johnny liver lips, whatever, Piculi. Uh but then there's this guy that they get uh where they've they've detained I think uh Don Mariano Arena and uh I f- fuck I forget who they have in there uh but they're just sort of asking him questions about mm. the three suspects they have detained and and he's just he, he's just like the cliche Italian where I just read it in this voice where they were like <laughs> where uh you know they're like asking him questions, and they're like, and then he th- he's about to leave. So the p- cops like, "Thank you, but we will do our best." And he's like, "No, let me have my say." <laughs> when in the middle of the night, they knock up an honored household, yes, honored, and plot of bed a poor creature who also aged and decrepit, and drag him off the jail like a common criminal, causing him anguish and consternation to an entire family. No, 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 that's inhumane. It's rank injustice. <laughs> founded where and how say someone goes out of his mind and sends you a note with my name on it then you come along at dead of night and as old as i am without regard for my past record as a citizen drag me off to jail where's anyone oh fuck i (laughs) you're doing good that's not that's not even what i fuck i don't know but just like he keeps going on like that where he's like you know i'll do respect but i think you're doing a shoddy job over here in this police department just like yeah, I actually clearly remember reading that section in the voice of uh, uh, James Franco in The Deuce. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think like one, like his name is like he plays twins in that show. I think one is Tommy or something. And twins. And I was like, hey, just that <laughs> face of James Franco. Hey, right. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? These yeah, are like I Joey Pantoliano. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I think the. Uh, the ending where Belodi kind of like gets the news that all of his work is kind of like poof, like gone up, right. gone up in flames is also really effective. And his, it like the, 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 the sort of like um, end of the book is Belodi back in Parma kind of like being happy to be back home. And like, he reconnects with a, a friend randomly on the street and they go to a party, and there's like sexy girls he's there. Having, or yeah, he's having like kind of a hip '60s <laughs> yes. night. Yes, it's a very like hip '60s night. And he they're kind all of... drinking wine and listening to jazz, and he's like, "This is tight, dude. It's a fucking vibe, honestly." Yeah, I, I wrote so here's a paragraph that I highlighted. That's that was I was like, "This is like a goddamn vibe." <laughs> Biting sleet was beginning to fall, and a white sky foretold heavy snow. Livia suggested they go home with her. Some of her women friends were coming and they could listen to some splendid old jazz records. Records unearthed by a miracle. There'd also be some good scotch whiskey and Carlos Primero brandy. And food, Ooh. asked Brescianelli. Livia promised that there would be food too. I'm like, I want to go to that fucking party, dude. That sounds like a vibe. Yeah, fuck. So Belodi goes to this party and sort of like, this is like after he kind of realizes that like, 
his all of his work on this case has just been fucking disappeared by the mafia. But he ultimately concludes the the, the ending is sort of interesting because he's like he kind of loves it. Like he loves being sort of like cucked by the mafia and he's like I want more of this. You know what I mean? It's like the, it's like he, he is he, a cuck. Now. He got he got fucking like <laughs> worked and he's like I want to go back for round 2. Right. Yeah. And I I think one thing that maybe we we had missed that I just want to make sure gets addressed is is the cuckoldry stuff is not just like lol funny like right. current current meme terminology but like there is this again incredibly relevant emphasis on like within the criminal justice system and uh uh the crime of passion uh yes there's like this hilarious the title of a mo- synonym book by the way not irrelevant. crime of passion or act of passion which is just like this thing that is at once both narratively more intriguing and uh results in a a, a far less severe punishment being the crime of passion, right? Like you killing somebody because you or your wife was cheating on you or whatever. And so like, uh, it's an easy explanation. And it also is like a little bit like, ah, you got you and we're all, you, we get it right. You get paid. You see your husband or wife fucking somebody, you kill them. It's like, it's a mafia strategy and it's, yeah. And it's a, it's a straight up strategy. And that's how the, it doesn't end that way. Like it ends with the mafia forcing another story by sheer force of will into the media of like, right. no, this, this person was actually just like here and everyone yes. just lies and eventually, and it's the truth, you know, ultimately in the media, but then the media, the last sting, because there's this whole other prior segment where they're like crimes of passion are the go-to move for the mob when they want to characterize why someone they killed was killed was actually yes. because like they were being unfaithful. Cucked. Cucked. Yes. Uh, yeah. Is that finally the like esteemed journalism, you know, this, the esteemed paper of record in Italy is like, and also we believe Bloody didn't really look into this like third option that could have been the, the driving force, which is that, uh, uh, Colas Berna or Nicolosi or whoever they were looking for, uh, uh, their wife was uh, sleeping <laughs> with like another guy. Yes, dude. just like a final little insult to injury, where they're like, and we really think that that seems to be right, and that ends up being what gets actually prosecuted. Yep. Um, well, I think that adds to the the potential terrifying nature of what the mob could be and maybe was for many years, even in our country too. Is it like? <clears throat> it makes me think of um like there were there were certain mob personas and bosses to use a video game term mm-hmm. um in our country I can't think of particular names I was trying to look That's a real up. mafia term. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. But I mean, they would actually like put these guys kind of in the forefront cuz they knew they were idiots and they knew they were going to make yes. crimes useful that idiots. Were yeah. public and, you know, very clearly like mob seeming crimes, but in reality their crimes went under the radar and they would be like, you know, swept under the rug, like, like a crime of passion type thing. And that makes, that makes the mob and the mafia a lot more terrifying to me is that like, I- if it is kind of a shadowy fi- like, uh, you know, organization that is so much more terrifying than like Scarface going into whatever, yes. and just like using an Uzi. <laughs> right. Right. I was literally just, people. I was just thinking of, uh, uh, I was joking. I forget who said like just wh- wh- why do like resistance libs love s- sexual intrigue so much <laughs> above any other right. type of impropriety? Because I was just thinking of uh, Cuomo. Oh my right? god, dude! And just like it's st- again, it's just why are still you another about Cuomo. You you live in Nevada as a story, as a national story, uh, right? Where it's like you know you could nail people for so many other far more disturbing and morally reprehensible things, but it's like, you know, sexual impropriety, again, something that could also be heinous or whatever, but that's, that, that, that's what sticks because it's, because it's like the only realm of like moral judgment and also, yeah, like uh, sensationalism to it that like gets people involved and gets people actually mad. That's a really good point. And, and, and the mafia 
fucking knew that. Like from the beginning, yeah. like that sex was sells. sex fucking sells. And that's the way to distract and divert and be like, Hey, look at this. This right. guy got cucked or this guy cheated on his <laughs> wife or whatever. Right. When, when, when over here, we just like chopped off the heads of three witnesses in a murder trial. Right. And we're, and we're, <laughs> we, we've siphoned off millions of, millions yeah, of, yeah, of, exactly. Of non-taxed dollars through extortion and shit. Yeah, exactly. It's like, and killed people. It's like, yeah. But then, like, oh, this guy fucked uh, this guy's wife. Right. And now we're mad. Yes. And I. That's just still a, another method of operation. Hundred <laughs> percent. Like, should be you know, looked at. It's bad. It's bad. <laughs> it's a bad situation. Okay. Here's my. Here's my last. Not not necessarily my last, but like a a, a textual question. What do y'all make of the title? The day of the owl. Well, there's a there's a there's a there's a there's an epigram or an epigraph. What's the difference between an epigram and an epigraph? I think one's like a fuck. It's an epigraph, but I I think an epigram like a symbol of some kind or like some sort of abbreviation. I don't don't know. know. Epigram. If there's any epigram or epigraph focused podcasts out there, (laughs) come on, we want to talk. Get on the pod. But but yeah, it's from it's from Henry the Eighth, right? By Shakespeare, Henry or Henry the Sixth. Pardon me. You want to read it? Sure. It says, um, "And he that will not fight for such a hope, go home to bed and like the owl by day. If he arise, be mocked and wondered at." So so why 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 do you think like Shasha sort of like gravitated to that that idea like i I think i get the point of the quote right like an owl that wakes up in the middle of the day is weird and stupid right like that's kind of goofy and and is like sort of deserving of mockery um but why for this book why use that title i I, uh i'm gonna sound like an idiot probably but i'll go ahead anyway because literature podcast um safe space for i don't know i i thought my my stupid brain just thought like you know an owl is a night creature that doesn't really blink that much and has giant eyes and sees all and also murders little vermin and i i just (laughs) thought it was a good uh true metaphor for the for the mob just like a a night stalker predator that it sees all that is like in control in its own way and also preys on weaker individuals for its own benefit. Mm. Um, so basically the, the owl is, it's a part of the patriarchy and the mafia is patriarchal. So. I like that. <laughs> kind of, kind of. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I was just thinking like also to just build off of that, like um, that, that mockery in this story is part of, is part of the process of, of the, uh, you know, it, it's just baked into the whole process. Like, right. Um, I was just thinking about the uh, the phrase "every owl gets his day." <laughs> 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 Where, yeah, it's like it's this thing that's completely suited for a very particular environment to do what it does very well, which is hunt and whatever. Right. Uh, and it, yeah, it's got big ass eyeballs and it is observant, um, and is ludicrous in a completely in another environment and that's the environment that the mafia is trying to create right so that the type of person that would be able to inquire into their activities and hunt them down looks ridiculous yes in doing so because yeah. they're they're kind of a, this false daylight even though there's so much about darkness and people like in waking in a waking dream and stuff being described here, so it's just kind of like this. Uh, it's like a photographic negative that they try and create, where it's like false daylight. Um, yeah, I, I I think that's I think that's really helpful. Like because I think like you know, you know, Belodi in the text it it is to me sort of representative of the owl. He's someone. He's something yeah. that is basically out of his element right like he's he's a he's an outsider from northern italy in sicily which is the sort of like metaphorical metaphorical equivalent of the owl in the daytime right Mm -hmm. like he's he's somewhere he shouldn't be engaging in shit that he shouldn't be engaging with and it, it, it it there's just a disconnect you know 
Like he, he has a set of skills that work and function in his context, like an owl at night. Mm -hmm. But when he's put into a different context, like Sicily uh, or the day to keep the metaphor, it, those, those, those set, those skills cease to function in the same way. And it seems like it, and it also sort of like going back to the Henry the sixth quote is about this sort of like optimism and pursuing a sort of like sense of hope and Belodi is this kind of like optimistic, you know, like a uh, uh, wholesome dude, like just trying to do the good thing for the right reasons. Well, they they, they don't cease to function. Just, it just doesn't work. It does. It doesn't work. I think the significance is that it his set his skill set is applicable everywhere. Right. Right. True. Like he succeeds. Yeah, he solves the crime for sure. He solves yeah. the crime. It's just, but it doesn't. It, but what he doesn't understand is that that doesn't matter. Yes, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I kind of thought of him as being in the Italian FBI, which I kind of thought of as like Fettuccini, Botticelli, uh, <laughs> Italian, well, Italy. <laughs> <laughs> Fettuccini, Botticelli, it, Italy, <laughs> Italy. <laughs> That's what FBI stands for. <laughs> or in Italy. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, the federal, I just also like the Federal Bureau of Italians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that more. <laughs> the fe- the, 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 it's, it's funny any way you do it. The fetish For Italians the, by Italians. The, <laughs> <laughs> Phoebe. No, no tell Phoebe. It's funny any way you slice it. The Fettuccine Bureau of Investigation. <laughs> it's just funny. Uh, it's just fucking funny. Man, it's going to be a dark day when we can't make these kind of jokes. The fe- the Federal Botticelli Investigation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God. Oh, God. Yeah. There's no, there's no way to make that not funny. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Uh. So, do we? Welcome to the fan favorite segment, the best segment on the show. If you've made it this far, you deserve this. You individually deserve You've earned this. You've earned it, dude. You've earned us. You've earned some Harry <laughs> Potter talk. You've earned us. Ooh. You've you've made it to Dumbledore <laughs> status, which in this particular case would be Dumbledore. <laughs> Dumbledore. <laughs> I'm never not gonna say Dumbledore like that. <laughs> it's so much better. It's so much better. Uh, uh, oh God. I'm trying to think of some of the other ones. Like, how would you say McGonagall? Like Italian. McGonagall. Mm-hmm. McGonagall. Like just Matt. like the two L's, just like a Y. Just you should have just been happy with Dumbledore. Okay, well listen, <laughs> I was trying. Okay, I understand. You're right. Ones. Harry Potter. <laughs> it's all. It's all that <laughs> inflection that is entirely almost racist. Italian racist. So this is the, the the part of the show where we um, indulge our, our Harry Potter lizard brains mm-hmm. and uh, put all of the characters, not all necessarily, but the most relevant ones of the book we read, because we literally just read another book. Yeah. The into, segment is called, we literally just read another book. So let us do the Harry Potter thing. So let us do it. Let us talk about Harry Potter. You can't be mad. You can't be mad. You can't. <laughs> if you've listened this far, you, you're not allowed to be mad anymore. The only person you can be Harry mad Potter. at is yourself. <laughs> and maybe you, you can be mad at J.K. Rowling. You masochist. Yes, you definitely can't you can be, be mad, mad at J.K. Rowling. Rowling. That's for sure. You might be mad at us for that whole thing. <laughs> yeah. but we, I mean, Harry Potter is standalone. I mean, artists is separate from their work. <laughs> well, right, yes. Yeah. But this uh, <laughs> that's Patreon-only content. Yeah, okay. We'll get into that. Patreon. This podcast or this segment is not an endorsement of J.K. Rowling. I think is that no. fair to say? Yeah, right. It's, endorse, it's an endorsement of Hagrid and the, <laughs> and the lore of HP. Right. Yes. 
I I do endorse the Triwizard Tournament and Cedric Diggory. <laughs> yeah, I endorse Crumb. I love Crumb. <laughs> <laughs> I endorse I endorse Bobotten. Uh. <laughs> and I endorse the idea that Ron is actually the last Horcrux. Uh, <laughs> Harry, Harry fucked up, and he's still out there, and he's in Ron. Ron at large. <laughs> this is a this is a Harry Potter podcast now. I did, I wish that there would be a, another seven part uh, or eight part movie series that Me was too, called Ron dude. Weasley, and Ron is the is the last Horcrux, <laughs> and it's the same movie except Ron is older. And he's he just Mr. Magooing that. it through life. People keep trying to <laughs> release the spirit of Voldemort out of him. And he develops, like, you know, violent tendencies and starts beating Hermione up. And it's because he has Whoa. Voldemort within his brain. That's dark. Sorry. Damn. It's dark. HBO. Written by David Foster Wallace. Wallace. Sorry. I don't endorse uh, <laughs> sexual violence or anything. Of course you don't, dude. But it, That's it, good, Paul. Come on. You wearing your Swans it T-shirt, but it's whatever. Pat myself. Oh yeah, Michael Gira, dude. That's a little. He's kind of canceled. Put I your mean, knife in me. Se- the artist is separate from the work. So. That's Patreon. Is he content. actually canceled? I didn't know that. Yeah, Michael Gira is kind of my pecs. a perv daddy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he is an asshole, but this music is, is good though. <laughs> it's good. It's very so, good. Who do so, we characterize? Uh, so I think we should probably talk about. Belody. Belody, certainly. Um, I think the victim, uh, uh, we don't actually have enough really info about Cole's him. Berna's Cole's Berna's Cole's Berna, yeah. nothing. He's a dead body. He's he's squib. a plot device, basically. He's a squib. He's maybe a squib. one of the, uh, maybe one of, uh, uh, Nicolosi, maybe? No, yep. no, no. He, who's well, he, the one who's, f- he's the one who freaks out, right? Nicolo, no, 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 that's Debella. Oh, okay. So De- Nicolosi is the other murder. He's the one who saw the the two assassins fleeing from the scene. Or the he one gets assassin. Offed, he gets off by the same guy who killed, yeah, the main yes. guy. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I think we should probably do Belodi, mm-hmm. Don Mariano, Arena. Okay. Maybe uh, DeBella. Who's like the original kind of like low level person, right? And then who's there's another mid level guy, right? Pol- or, P- 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 Pizuko, Pizuko, Pizuko. Yeah, yeah. It's, so Debello and Pizuko, Debella and Pizuko are sort of like the mid level people, and then Mariano Arena is the the Don in this case. Here's my problem: is Mariano Rivera. Okay, can I? I'll just. <laughs> I'm just best, gonna give the best pitcher in the history of Major League Baseball. I'm just gonna say that. No comment. Starter, I, I like a tree, a true Yankee. Fan. I am a Yankee fan, but it's weird because I'm I'm from Alabama. Yeah, I'm from Salt yeah. Lake City, Nevada, like Matt. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So there's four people we just said. I'm literally gonna go. Uh. Belody. Gryffindor. The two informants. Hufflepuff. This is standard. And then Arena Slytherin. Uh, ooh, I was going to say also Gryffindor. Mm. Like, I think that, that, which is why they have that that vibe. Belodi and Arena sort of oh, like. Oh, fucking game recognized game. Game recognized game, dude. Exactly, dude. They don't. Ma- Arena doesn't give a okay. fuck. He's, he's, it, it, he's on some Giga Chad shit <laughs> where, where he's just like. He knows he's fine. Like, are his motivations bad? Yes. Right? Are his sort of, like, set of interests bad? Definitely. Does he believe, does he believe in what's his uh, own I thoughts I about think what's so, happening? I think kind of. I think, he, I think he genuinely believes. Like, that passage that I read about him sort of, like, describing the categories of, her, of humanity, I don't think that's, like, just a front he's putting on for the cops. Like... I think that's he Slytherin really, as fuck I think too, though. He, well, it's Slytherin in, in that it's bad, but it's Gryffindor in that in that he's fucking earnest about it. Yeah, but it's yeah, but, but it's Slytherin so in the Voldemort. important way of it's yeah, like he's earnest about bad things. a hierarchical categorization <laughs> of be, of of living beings from better to worse. Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> fuck. 
because like, like Hitler was know. very earnest about hating Jews. That's true. Yeah, yeah. And I think he was a Slytherin. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait. Okay. I just I I feel like we're slipping a little bit though here. If I'm being honest, like we're slipping. Like one of our whole things is that even like a, a Gryffindor can have bad beliefs, right? True that. Do yeah. we do we do? Is that still, like like so? You can have you can have shitty beliefs, but if you earnestly kind of, like like to me like one of the defining characteristics of Slytherinness is like inauthenticity. Okay. And I feel like even Mariano Arena is like authentic. Like he's in, he's he's earnest. He's, he he believes what the fuck he's saying. It's evil. It's terrible, and it sucks, and it causes like horrible harm. See, I don't, I, I don't I know think that in know that what you said in uh, what did you say? In authenticity, in authenticity, <laughs> is um, <laughs> that's like fourth in li- fourth in line for me when it comes to Slytherins. I okay, feel like a Slytherin has like they have ambition. That's my number one thing, and also a denial of what they know is right. So mm. they might, they might be able to differentiate between what is right and wrong but if they go against what they know is wrong or know is right then they're a slytherin so like i think um he knew what was right and wrong and he decided to do things that he knew were wrong see that's where i disagree in terms of not in terms not in terms of not in terms of the houses but in terms of your characterization of characterization of arena like i i think he had gotten to the point maybe maybe earlier in his life he fit that description but when we meet him in this book he has gotten to the point where he believes that what he's doing is correct is is right because he believes that that the world is divided up into the cucks and the non-cucks and the men and the pygmies and the and the ass fucking ass eaters or whatever (laughs) <laughs> but when it comes down to it, those are all morally wrong judgments, right? So yes, but he earnestly believes in his morally wrong judgments. Here's my here's what here's what I think. Here's where I think the important difference lies. Belodi is the day owl, and he's getting made True. fun of, and he's in danger, and people are like, "This guy is weird," uh, and he's still doing his thing. Uh, Arena, Arena, Arena. Uh, he's the night owl. He, no, he he. Mm, kind of, because he's at home in that element. He's comfortable in a in a context he's like bought into, invested in, right. like the Death Eaters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go. And and, and of go, course dude. he of course he feels correct about it, but he's had no real challenge aside from somebody who he's typically been able to disregard. A cop, uh, a cop, a noble pig. cop, you know. Big. And you know maybe he's gotten high on his own supply at this point in terms of like his outlook in the world. I don't know. It, it it feels it feels like it was the easier move, contextually for Arena and not f- and and Belodi is like uphill and that that that's the brave element. Whereas it's not so much. Okay, that makes Don. sense. That makes sense. So that's where that comes from. I'm gonna stick with Slurin for for Don. I'm stick. I'm I'm at, I I I hear you. I was, I think that was a that was a. The well stated case. Thank you. To me, they're both. I still, I'm sticking with Gryffindor for both. And and then the two lower level people are, yeah, clearly Hufflepuff. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna say the the two lower level people are are puffs. I'm gonna say the Don is a Slytherin. But I'm gonna say Bel- Belodi has. He he's interesting to me. He I feel like he because of the end, and him like wanting to be cucked by the mafia. There's a little bit of like. Uh, Hufflepuff within him, but I'm still going to say that he's a Gryffindor. Yeah. Yeah. I think the danger societally is the Hufflepuff tendency to want to be cucked. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, you know, potentially with his name, Belodi, I was like, 
he, you know, maybe you're below me and like <laughs> blow me. And I was like, maybe he's a Slytherin. Right. But and, like yeah. take take your wife will take my Lodi, things like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Things like that. I just want to say to be clear that I think that that uh, uh, Arena is bad Gryffindor, but I still okay. I'm <laughs> saying like I'm still That's saying fair. Gryffindor. Fair. Okay. This gentleman's disagreement. Gentleman's disagreement. Nope. Nope. No. 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 T. No shade. Nah. Just. Just three deeply intelligent people having a polite disagreement. <laughs> Fucking brilliant kings. <laughs> touch, touch my biscrotti. <laughs> Okay. Well. All right. We should probably we should probably uh, we should probably rate this book here before we go off the rails even further. Yeah. Uh, okay. I've got to go last. I think. Right. Yeah. My pick. Can I, I'm gonna go second. All right. <laughs> well, hey, that leave that, that leaves me. Uh, I was gonna go with a three point six eight. Nice. Liked it. Had a good time. My initial rating before the podcast started was a 3.1 but i'm gonna say 3.47 after the discussion boosted it up we're all in the same ballpark boys i'm i'm i'm, I'm a little bit higher because i just think that i'm i'm a i'm a hoe mm-hmm. for like crime fiction lap and it up simonon and i just i just i love it and this hit it it, it hit me in that spot so I'm I'm at I'm at like a three point eight three, right on. A nice. little bit. Little I will bit be ha- seeking more for yes. sure. And I did buy um, a collection of his short stories that I want to read that I may do as a series for the YouTube and or the Patreon. Um, it's called it's called the Wine Dark Sea, which like, I've heard of this. God, what an amazing title! Like so fucking good. Yes. And yeah. so I just I I want to read some of his short fiction because the. Um, kind of like stuff that I've heard about him is that some of his best work is in the short fiction format, and I mm-hmm. kind of want to read those stories, and and that's something that uh, you may see on the Patreon and or the YouTube. Yeah, so look forward to that. I, I was also, um, you know, in the in the forward there was a, like they were like you know uh, George Cialaba was making a lot about how this was like the the entry point, a good entry point. He was the most accessible here. He was the most straightforward. Yes. I'm like, I would love to hear more meditative. Same, dude. Shasha, you know what I mean? Like, because he already kind of knocked me out with a couple just aside, almost seeming little, little meditations on justice and human society and yes, stuff. It's like, absolutely. I'm all about the more obscure, less direct even version of whatever these crime stories are. I love that. I love that. Yeah. It, it, yeah. So it's it, it 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 did kind of like feel to me. It it lived up to in a problematic, dumb way. Kind of what I thought. Like, oh, it's like Italian Simonon, but 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 again, he's more political. And I and I think that and that's a nice thing to say, even yes. though it sounds rude. It sounds rude. It really yeah, it does. <laughs> But it's just the Simonon, form and it's Sim, not the Sim, content. Simonon is my favorite author. Anyone who gets favorable comparisons with him, that's points. Mm-hmm. And that's I points. don't know for whatever Chris reason, Hardwick. I love these fucking like existential crime stories. That's like my shit. Italian Wire, Italian Wire, <laughs> Italian Hamtaro. Is that what that is behind you? Yeah, I've got a Hamtaro background. I also just want to say, uh, just just as a reference. Um, or a, a plug, anyone who's listening to this point, which is nobody, but there's a great film that's in the same like vein as this. It's called Gamora. Oh baby, yes. And we maybe we should have talked about this, but like this book also gave me like Gamora vibes, which is a a very kind of like you know I don't like the term, but like raw, unromantic. <laughs> depiction <laughs> of like the i know yeah i know i don't know i that's all right I, I my vocabulary is not that good um i'm also running into the wall of my vocabulary which is annoying me yeah it yeah it's frustrating so but it's another one of these sort of like unromantic depictions of like the day-to-day the sort of like quotidian life of the italian mafia but in film form and it's 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 so fucking good it's so good that's a criterion, so you guys, if yes. you're interested, that's yes. uh, 
Matteo getting... Garone or Garone, I think, is the director. I don't remember. I don't know how to pro- I don't know how to pronounce it. I know that's his name, but I don't know how to pronounce it. That's a good movie, Paul. You should watch that movie. You haven't seen it. You okay. will like it. You will love it. Yeah. I still need to no watch joke. The Pokemon movie though. So I'm gonna watch that first. <laughs> Wrath of Mewtwo. Fair enough. It, I mean, I, w- I did want to say that if I if there was one person to direct this as a movie, I would say Martin Scorsese. You know, <laughs> yeah. I I I, I kind of disagree, but I also would want to see it. Because Scorsese is Scorsese. Scorsese is like one of the architects of like the Western kind of like American view of like the mafia, the mob. And yeah. like him interpreting something that's a little bit less romantic than maybe his vision or a little bit more kind of like. Well, you especially know. now post The Irishman. Yes. Could Fucking be great movie too. Really good. God damn, I love that movie. <laughs> long. long, 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 good, good. long, good. <laughs> All right, boys, let's bring right. this into port. We love y'all. Thank you so much Bye. for listening. For, for real. No, you guys, you, you guys rule. Give yourself Sorry. a pat on the back. Give yourself a pat on the back for making it this far. Read <laughs> the Day of the Owl. Subscribe to our Patreon. Subscribe to our YouTube. Uh, watch Gamora, watch The Irishman, and write Martin Scorsese a letter to make this book into a movie. That's right. Bye. Bye. Bye.